King Henry VIII is remembered in history as a man who would turn on his wives and even his closest friends, with many of them being sent to execution scaffolds all over England. But one execution that the king regretted hugely was that of Thomas Cromwell, his chief adviser. Cromwell was a brute of a man who ruined the lives of so many as he shut down the monasteries, made thousands homeless and stole the wealth of the church in England for Henry VIII. But Cromwell was the man who demonstrated incredible loyalty to Henry VIII. However, he would fall from grace brutally, and the king would cross him as he blamed him for his disastrous fourth marriage that cost the Tudor king so very dearly. Join us today as we look at the execution of Thomas Cromwell, Henry VIII's best friend, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Thomas Cromwell began his career as a lawyer, and he would also work as a merchant in London, but he was someone who worked as an advisor to Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, who during the early part of Henry VIII's reign was the King's chief advisor. He was also the main liaison for the Pope in England, but Cromwell then became involved in politics, and to begin with he was someone who was not afraid to be critical of the King, and he would prepare speeches against the King's planned invasion of France. But he then became involved in shutting down monastic houses and religious buildings for Wolsey, and it was this that saw him become later of use for Henry VIII. The money from these homes would then be used in other projects, but when Wolsey fell from power, Cromwell would emerge. Henry VIII knew who Thomas Cromwell was, and he was loyal to Wolsey, despite his downfall, which could have seen him being executed if Wolsey did not succumb to illness inside of Leicester Abbey. But Cromwell became a member of the Privy Council, and he was then made the King's chief advisor. Henry VIII at the time was trying to rid himself of his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, and Wolsey could not sort this out for him, but Cromwell then found out a way for the king to circumvent the Pope's permission for a divorce, and this was to declare himself the supreme head of the Church of England, and consult scholars who would pass judgment on this. Henry did what he wanted, and Cromwell prorogued Parliament, and other key figures such as Thomas More resigned because of the chaos. Henry VIII was then free in the eyes of Cromwell to marry Anne Boleyn, his second wife, in secret, and Cromwell introduced more laws that restricted the power of the Catholic Church, and he moved other allies into positions of power. Henry VIII got what he wanted, and because of this he was incredibly happy with Cromwell, but he was also a great friend to the king. Cromwell also was ordered to ensure complete support for the king, in enforcing members of the clergy to accept Henry VIII as the supreme head of the Church of England, and many who did not support this lost their homes and ultimately lives in the most barbaric ways. Some people such as Sir Thomas More and Bishop John Fisher would lose their heads on Tower Hill, as they could not support Anne Boleyn also, but the king's second wife would later become a victim of Cromwell and his scheming. Henry VIII fell in love with Jane Seymour, one of Anne's ladies-in-waiting, and Cromwell, who was formerly Anne's ally, was tasked yet again with finding the king a way out of his marriage, and because of this he tried his best to come up with a number of false charges to condemn Anne Boleyn to death. It was written at the time that, Cromwell has been authorised and commissioned by the king, to prosecute and bring an end to the mistress's trial, to do which he had taken considerable trouble. He set himself to devise and conspire the said affair. But Cromwell then had Anne Boleyn imprisoned inside of the Tower of London. Then a number of women were sent to attend on her, and these were forced to spy on Anne and report any piece of information that could later be used in evidence against her. Anne was accused of adultery, incest and treason, and ultimately alongside five other men, including her brother, she was condemned to death. It was Cromwell who was the architect behind Anne's execution that took place inside of the Tower of London. But Thomas Cromwell is most remembered for the dissolutions of the monasteries, and in this he shut down and took control of hundreds of religious houses, abbeys and monasteries, as well as nunneries. It was the biggest land grab for centuries in England, and a huge amount of destruction was launched against the religious structure in England. There were abbots who were executed outside their own abbeys, and Cromwell along with the king absorbed all the wealth of these homes and became incredibly rich. The land was sold off cheaply and Cromwell became a hated figure because of this. It also hit the poorer people as they used these religious houses for charity and support but this was no more and they suffered even further. But Thomas Cromwell himself did fall from grace. After the death of King Henry VIII's third wife Jane Seymour he was tasked with finding the king a new wife and he put forward the daughters of the Cleves Duke, from Germany. The royal painter Hans Holbein was sent to create images of the girls, and when confronted with these images, Henry VIII chose Anne of Cleves over her sister Amalia, 
and Cromwell then sorted the negotiations out with the marriage. But the marriage was a disaster, and Henry VIII thought he had been conned when he saw her looks, and Cromwell tried desperately to search for a way out of the potential marriage, but he could not do this. The king was forced to marry Anne of Cleves, and Cromwell was left wounded, and his enemies dug their claws into him, and he was then arrested at Westminster on the 10th of June 1540. He was accused of treason, and his garter sash was literally torn from his shoulders, and Cromwell was disgusted, and he believed that this was how he was being rewarded for being such a faithful servant to the king. However, he was quickly taken down river to be imprisoned inside of the Tower of London, and the king, his former best friend, was convinced to pass an act of attainder against him, allowing Cromwell to be executed without a trial. He was even accused of trying to marry the king's daughter, but Cromwell lost everything, and he was just referred to as a cloth carder, rather than the king's chief adviser. The king delayed Cromwell's impending execution, until the problem of his fourth marriage had been sorted, and this was very costly, as Anne was given a huge amount of wealth and property in the settlement. However, on the 28th of July 1540, Thomas Cromwell was taken from his prison cell inside the Tower of London to the execution scaffold on Tower Hill. He was accompanied on the short walk north of the Tower by guards, and there was an executioner armed with the axe waiting for him. The people across London, who watched, jeered the man who was hated, and a chronicler wrote of his execution that, Cromwell was brought to the scaffold on Tower Hill, where he said the following words, I am come hither to die, and not to purge myself, as may happen. Some think that I will for if I should do so. I were a wretched miser. I am by law condemned to die, and thank God that hath appointed me this death. For my offence I have lived a sinner, and offended my Lord God, for which I ask him hearty forgiveness. I have offended my prince, for which I ask him forgiveness, and I beseech you all to pray to God with me that he will forgive me. And now I pray that be here to bear me record. I die in the Catholic faith, not doubting in any article of my faith. I confess that like as God, by his Holy Spirit, I have been seduced by the devil. I heartily desire you to pray for the King's grace and may long live with you, in health and prosperity, and after him that his son, Prince Edward, may long reign over you. Cromwell then gave himself over to the executioner on the scaffold. He passed the executioner some money, as was tradition, to try and guarantee a skilled and quick death, almost like a bribe, but this would not happen. Cromwell's executioner has been described as a wretched miser, and Cromwell, it was said, so patiently suffered the stroke of the axe by a ragged and butcherly miser, which very ungodly performed the office. The executioner took a number of swings to take Cromwell's head off. It was not a clean execution. It took the executioner two or three swings of the axe to sever his head from his body, and it's believed that this shocked the crowd, even those who hated Cromwell. Thomas Cromwell was a man who would do anything that Henry VIII wanted, and he was a schemer and someone who would execute and cause chaos across the nation. He ultimately flew too close to the sun and was turned on by Henry VIII, but the king, until the day he died, regretted the execution of Thomas Cromwell, his most influential chief advisor, but also one of his closest friends. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.